Somebody give us an hand sign in the fucking place. Where's the hand sign? Drum and bass, man. Drum and J Hype talking bollocks, volume one. I grew up in High Wycombe, which is in Buckinghamshire, out in the sticks, as some people like to say. Growing up in the 80s for me was all about the electro, breakdancing, b-boying, and the early signs of hip hop. Um, that's something I was heavily into. The natural progression for me was just to go into music of some sort. The first thing that I really got into was DJing. Just, just literally just cutting up on one deck. That I had a little crappy little MIDI hi-fi. They had back in the day with a sliding volume doing that, you know what I mean, trying to cut up. I um, bought two ch cheap decks and a little realistic mixer. And then a four track, and for me back then, it was all about the four track, just cutting up the breaks, recording it on one track, coming back, cutting up something else at the top, recording it, getting an MC round, just throwing it down and just having fun. Before I was doing drum and bass, I was doing hip hop. That was my first love. Then um, the whole rave culture came in, and for me, it, it did nothing for me. The real early stuff, you know, all the housey stuff and the bleeps and smiley face, and wasn't for me, man. The thing that gave me the kick up the ass and, and the sort of understanding about it all was when Ragga Twins and Shut Up and Dance came up on the scene. For me, that, that was something then I could relate to. They had the breaks, you know, that they had that whole hip hop element and Ragga element in there. I could really sort of cling on to that. That's, that's kind of what drew me into the early drum and bass. From then it was, it was like I said before, it was, it was all about fun, having fun, having fun with music. So me and a friend was just sit there, just doing tunes, just messing around, literally messing around. We had a computer by then and sampler and everything else. I got approached by a guy who owns a record, well, used to own a record shop in Wickham. Um, wanted to put, heard some of the stuff we was doing, wanted to put it out. So he put a white label out and then we kind of got messed about a bit, as you always do in the early days, and it just, it was, I was just like, you know what, forget this, man, it's, just do it ourselves, you know? Just looked into it, and I'm that kind of person, if, if you want a job doing right, you do it yourself. That's why I do all the website, I do everything, because it's like, I don't want to give it anyone else. I want it done, because I know how I want it done, so I will do it. So that's how it was back then, so I just looked into how we would go about pressing our uh, records and stuff, and then we just put out a couple of white labels, man, and then, this edge kind of rolled on from there. Me and Hype met basically through doing music, through setting up Face Records. Sponge knew Hype. Sponge used to do promotions back in the day. And yeah, I think he brought Hype down to Wickham a couple of times. And it's just me doing tracks and going up there and meeting him one time and him liking the tracks that I was doing. After Face Records, I started my own label called Frontline. Um, and at the same sort of time, he wanted to start a label called Ganja. He didn't know nothing about starting a label. So I just kind of helped him out there. I just sort of done the run-ins of it back then and just helped him get everything off the ground and he was just putting loads of releases out on that and it was doing really well. We are working side by side so much, me with Frontline, him with Ganja. It, it just made sense to kind of come together and have one solid camp, you know?
it's a, such a limited market with drum and bass you find you know it's, it's obviously it's not rock and roll you don't get them kind of sales so everyone in drum and bass kind of has their moments of struggle and stuff but so when you when you look at it like that, I, I'm just, I sit here and I, I feel proud of what I have achieved I've been in this game 15 16 years or something you know so that's a long long time so for me it's just about maintaining what we do now and trying to keep progressing and just roll with the punches <laughs> From Hornsey, North London, that's where most of my personality comes from. Music was the, the thing back in the day for a lot of men who didn't really have much of an education. You know what I mean? Music was like the answer, you know, the, the comfort. Because no one was doing it back then, it was like a special thing, you know what I mean? And somehow got money and went to a studio and tried to produce our track. The music basically kept certain men out of trouble because we was easily influenced, you know what I mean? We was all doing all kind of madness, you know what I mean? Some of us didn't really want to keep up with that side. We wanted to do the music, so I chose the music. Any time I'm building a tune or going into a tune, I always, I don't know, it, I automatically go back to when I was a kid, listening to all different kind of reggae tunes or soul tunes, reggae groove tunes, whatever tunes, you know what I mean? Sometimes I could be here just listening to dub, reggae grooves. I just catch a vibe. Or I just hear a bass sound or a guitar sound or whatever, and I just catch a vibe and try it on drum and bass. My influences from back in the day was Rebel MC, Tell the Truth, and Sharp and Dance. Because they're, they're the real innovators. I think they influence a lot of men my age. The tune girls. Yush was here. He's like my main artist, I should say, because he could do anything. I did the rhythm track of girls. I hyped him to link up with MC Fats. I played him the track and he was feeling it and he come up with a girl vocal. It just started from there. The vibes just took off and that was it. Thought that we had a, a good tune there. And just got into it. My main focus now is my album, and um, that's what I'm gonna purely be concentrating on. And um, Jekyll and Hyde Records. Hopefully, we try to get it to a level where people get the understanding that you know it's about the music. Hey! kind of all started on AIM, really. We were just chatting on the basis of, you know, he'd heard a few of my tunes and liked them. And, um, you know, we just, we seemed to get on well on AIM just chatting. And so I was like, okay, you know, you're interested, then. <laughs> that was the point when I made the decision that I wanted to join the players' camp. It's a prestigious camp, so, you know, I, I definitely wanted to be a part of it. This is something to be featured on the Dub Plate Killers Part 2 album, Return of the Ninja. Crystal Clear, featuring Spiky T. OK, Blaze. Um... I wanted to make a tune with a bit of a kind of a reggae intro, um, an actual proper kind of reggae half, half speed beats and stuff. I like I like to use a lot of vocals on on my tunes just because I think it adds adds a, another element. I was speaking to Hype and said, you know, do you know any any vocalists and stuff? And he, he recommended Spikey. He laid down the vocals around at Codebreaker's place, um, 
That's about a week before he nipped off to uh, to, to Australia. More music, just getting in the studio as much as I can, developing my sound, which, you know, is going to be a hybrid of various different sounds and just learning more because, you know, I'm at an early stage, so I'm still filling my head with how to do things. I want to push myself and, you know, progress and push things forward. Wow. I used to do Cool FM in Birmingham, Pirate Radio. Worked in a record shop for two years, going to clubs and getting paid £20 and sometimes getting paid nothing. You know, all the experiences you need to become the part of drum and bass, you get all the crappy experiences and then all of a sudden you get signed to a big label and everything goes all well all of a sudden. First I got a call off Hyde asking me if I'd do a tune for the label. And I was a bit busy at the time. I didn't realise what Hyde was actually saying to me and I offered him a remix and told him I didn't want to be signed to any label. So I didn't know what signing was about. I done him the remix and then he said he was going to make me an offer that I couldn't refuse. He made me the offer, couldn't refuse and here I am. <laughs> Being part of this organisation, I wouldn't have it any other way now, because I've seen these are the actual the people who are looking after me for my best interest, not just theirs. I listen to all different types of music. I watch a lot of films, I sample a lot of films. When I'm making music myself, I've always got the telly on in the background. And you know, you pick up influences off all types of things in life rather than just music. Got a track called All The Way. Unless you were going all the way. All The Way is a bouncy tune with, it's got a little sample of Transformers in the intro. <laughs> the main reason I work by myself is because I work at night, but I'm looking into working with other people because I'm sure there's a lot to offer by doing that. I spoke to G-Dub, we're going to get something going on, and um, I've never met Crystal Clear, but hopefully I will soon, and we'll get something done there as well. I really do want to try and work with other people because being ignorant, just doing it on my own, so yeah. We'll give it a go. Wow. I've always been into music. All music's gonna um, it's not just drum and bass. It's just that's yeah. what I like yeah. to make and what I like to play, DJ, you know. I learned to play guitar when I was about 14 to make my own play the drums. And you want, want me to play the guitar, I want to play the guitar and that. So I learned how to play the guitar, I set up a band with some mates and it was good, it was basically good stuff, it was fun. After school splits, everyone lived in a different part of the country and all that, so I uh, started DJing basically. After that, I realised, well, I might as well get a computer, start doing it on that, and the rest from there. I sort of started DJing back in the 80s but not right into sort of thing, just putting a record on and then put another record on, but it was more like a very hard hip hop. And then uh, I think it was basically from soul to soul. And uh, got two soul to soul records, Back to Life, and Back to the Forwards, I then introduced another tune, and uh, Back to the Forwards with that. And then it just sort of progressed from there. Friend of my record shop, just got loads of like three records, just helping out in the shop. Uh, and then uh, I used to go around a friend's house, jamming on his decks. And ever since, I just can't stop getting off the decks. Sometimes, sometimes. Who really came with some sounds? I wanted to go one way. He came, he came, actually, he came in this mad session. 
because he, 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 he was very good at getting ideas and bringing them in. And he, had, he was getting all this mad stuff. But then I sort of stripped it down. I was like, look, what you've got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was this, that left this really nice, simple kind of vibe we had. So then from there, we fucked around with things, put more sounds in, fattened the beats up, put more beats in. And, and then we, yeah, we got this, we got the bass line, we got this thing uh, which, which pitches samples but keeps the time duration the same. You can draw it on how you pitch it about. So we, and it works really well with sub. Mm. Better than it does with you know with sub, it almost makes it fatter. Yeah, yeah. Like always the engineer, right? It's like I'm an engineer. <laughs> I'm an engineer and and I do everything else. Sits down, watches. <laughs> <laughs> kind of in the background from a certain point yeah. but we never thought for a second that would actually end up signing to, to True Players, uh, Ganja. Pipe as, as a mentor and a boss, yeah. like second to none from, from what I've seen and heard so far, I mean, you know, he's on the phone to all the time saying, I think you could improve this, I think you can improve that. That was all right, but I know you can do better and like we hadn't had that for a long time because people just kept on this and that's what they did. Just, all of that out, you know what I'm saying? Like our music's improved leaps and bounds, and I think that is solely down to the hype pushing us, you know what I'm saying? Someone who knows what you know what we need to do to take our music to the next level for yeah. us to progress. <laughs> Obviously more production. I think we want to really make a big effort to become big in the DJ scene, you know. Yeah. DJing's the next the next the next step. thing and like we mean business, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you now. For a long time um, we had to put all of our energy into production. Now we're at a stage where we're happy with the production and it's evolving at a constant rate, whether we're trying or not basically. And we're realising that we've got to focus more on the DJing thing so 
Yeah. Not saying that we're not good. <laughs> Just saying we know we can get better, you know what I mean? So that's the main focus for next year. I mean, we're also thinking of doing an album as well, aren't we? Yeah, that's something, right something that's only come about recently. Yeah. And it's a big statement, an album as well. And if, if, if you're not completely happy with what you're doing, if you know that maybe you can improve in certain areas, and if you want to make a very album, a proper project, you've got to be able to handle all the full spectrum of drum and bass and yeah. in, able, in order to make it an interesting thing to listen to from the start to the beginning, you know what I mean? It's just start to end, you know? if it's jump, If it's jump up at the beginning and it's jump up all the way through at the end, then it, then you know, that's not an album, that's just, that's just a collection, collection of singles, of isn't it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now we're finally at a stage where we feel like we can tackle drum and bass from all angles and that's why we now feel like we're ready for an album, basically, yeah. So I think that's what we're definitely going to look at doing. Wow. Oh, my brother again, really. He started DJing, he was DJing like hardcore and stuff like that, and rave music. Then he just picked up some jungle records one day, and I heard it and I was like, yeah, that's bad, I wanna, I wanna do that. I think the stuff that influenced us the most was Prototype Girls CD, like the compilation, just all the sci-fi stuff on that, and all the stuff on good looking records, for like the atmospheric stuff. Started DJing, then, um, Adam started making tunes, then started making tunes after them, just took it from there. I was working in the call centre at the time, and I got a phone call from my brother after I made a tune called uh, Warp Speed. Originally made it uh, in less came down for a few days. A couple of days afterwards, found out that Hype wanted to sign us, and uh, that was just mind blown. So just uh, walk out of work and just uh, start making tunes for um, Vibe and it just feels great. Uh, being part of a good camp that um, had a really big contribution to the, to the scene and I just feel, feel uh, very honoured to be a part of it. <laughs> Biggest influences is um, films, I'd say. Films like old sci-fi stuff, Blade Runner, that was a huge influence on us, just like the the sounds, just all uh, sci-fi stuff and horror stuff, just like all the atmospherics and on it and just all that kind of stuff. Influenced by old school like hip hop, um, electro, hardcore, just, just just about anything from when the time I was growing up. Like even stuff like uh, Subliminal, like um, just like 80s music. Like all the underground stuff and the pop stuff, just just, just about anything that, that you hear, you know what I mean? Just gets stuck inside your, set, your head and you don't realise it, but it does, and it just starts to come out. So, yeah, I suppose influence just by about everything around. Hey, but what you gonna say? But what you gonna do? Generation dub and tax man up past you. Said tax man up fast, we are rolling show. No different guy, just how we put in the venue. Yo, yo, yo. Vibes really come from when I was back in the early listening to reggae music and uh, listening to sound clashes and going to, to parties and events and hearing the way the MC just at an instant can take control of the dance. All the, you know, the dance is running nice and the, the MC can just cut in and take control. That's what I liked, you know what I mean? The whole like dub element of things was going down that time. I just love the vocal element of it, the way it just took control and just drew a different vibe without giving them